stroke in the care in the first place. Number one, it's a very big public health problem. So of all the neurological conditions, stroke is the most common, and it's the most common disabling condition for adults. felt like I wanted to, whatever I did, I wanted to make a difference and make it relevant, and so this is a big disease that's important. If we can improve on treatment, we're going to affect the lives of a lot of people. The single biggest problem with stroke care um, in my mind, is that people don't call 911 when they have a stroke. When someone has a stroke, it doesn't hurt. Generally, it does not hurt. It's just one half of the brain stops working. So in a sense, the part of your brain that's responsible for recognizing that you're having a stroke is exactly where the stroke is occurring. And so people don't recognize how severe the stroke is. So it's critically important that people recognize the symptoms of stroke and call 911 fast. It's bringing the emergency room to someone's driveway so that the faster we can get these units out on the street, the faster we can begin to see the benefits for, for the community at large. Stroke has two different varieties. One is caused by a blocked artery, and caused by a blood clot that blocks off the artery. The other is caused by rupture of the artery and bleeding into the brain. So with the blocked artery strokes, the treatment is to unblock the clot with a blood thinner or a, um, or a clot busting drug like TPA. Whereas if it's a bleeding or hemorrhagic stroke, the treatment is to stop the bleeding. And those are two diametrically opposite. But if you look at a patient lying there who's weak on one side or has a impaired speech, you can't tell looking at that patient whether they're having the bleeding stroke or the blocked artery stroke. The only way to know, right now at least, is to do an uh, imaging of the brain, a CT scan. I felt like if this is ever going to be a practical thing for the fire department to buy onto, it's got to pretty much be the same as the typical fire department ambulance. And there's no reason it can't be. as. Fraser showed us that they can easily put the CT scanner on a standard ambulance and there's enough room for the patient and the staff to be back there to take care of them. It turns out that a Fraser is the perfect platform for a mobile stroke unit. Number one, we have the onboard generator, so we have the power capacity right from the get-go to handle any of the needs and to put the air conditioner on it the, the 120 volt air conditioning system that works when it's plugged into the station so it keeps the machine at room temperature. Also some of the, the equipment that they use to do the labs right there on the spot need to be kept somewhere between 66 and 75 degrees at all times. So it's super easy, they don't have to pull that on and off the unit, they can leave it on there at all times. So what the mobile stroke unit does is it takes the emergency department to the patient. We put onto this ambulance, a regular fire department ambulance, a CT scanner to image the brain to tell between bleeding and, and blocked artery, laboratory testing so that we can measure the blood thinning level and other things that we may need to measure, and then the expertise, me, that is a vascular neurologist, doctor, a nurse, a CT tech to do the CT scan, and a paramedic to drive the vehicle. And we respond to 911 calls along with the fire department and identify the patients, uh, whether they're having a stroke right there on the site where we're called to. And then if the patient's having, we think is having a stroke, we move them into our mobile stroke unit and do the CT scan. And if the CT scan shows that it's a blocked artery stroke, we can deliver TPA. If it shows that it's a bleeding stroke, then we do other things like lower the blood pressure and other measures. But um, the most important thing is that if it's a, a blocked artery stroke, we can give TPA.
If we can treat patients an hour earlier as a result of this effort, their outcomes will be better. This unit that we built for UT Health is on Chevrolet C3500 gasoline chassis with the payload necessary to handle the CT scanner and the personnel that are going on it. Plus it needed to be uh, fixed to the front wall. We have plate in there and then a method of attachment that's extremely solid. Uh, I rode out with the Mobile Stroke team several times and for some reason I thought well maybe they would drive this unit a little differently since there was a nearly $400,000 CT machine in it but uh, we hit the railroad tracks at 45 miles an hour just like it was any other EMS call and they, they haven't had any issues with the CT scanner and how it works so it's not only a very robust machine but the way we mounted it um, works very well for that application and it's, it's solid in there. We are developing telemedicine capability where essentially you've got a camera on your computer that's taking a picture of you and uh, there's a camera in the ambulance that is taking a picture of the patient. So it's just like being with the physician in person. I can ask them questions. So I can zoom in and see the patient's face. So I can essentially do the whole neurologic exam remotely. Then I can see the CT scan that's done on the mobile stroke unit, gets pushed over to my computer. I can see it on my computer. That's what telemedicine will do. With not a lot of modifications to the unit, we were able to find a spot that that CT scanner easily would go. We also have a very wide aisle so it was easy to install the plate with the tracks in it. So this machine, this machine has tracks that it goes forward and back on. So those were easy to install. And because we have, you know, we have all LED lighting standards, so it's a very bright unit. It looks like you're in essentially a mobile ER. Functionality-wise, it was important for both the Mobile Stroke Consortium and the City of Houston to make sure that this fit and was ultimately licensed as an ambulance. So when they set this unit up, they went not only to the state but to the city and looked at the list of required equipment and all of that, you know, everything they would need to make a quote-unquote normal call is also on the unit. The first patient we had was a 30-year-old woman who um, just walked out of the bathroom and collapsed. When we got there, it wasn't clear what was going on. She just was sort of semi-conscious and she was that slur of speech. She was weak all over. When I learned about Miss Osaka, my dad is actually the one who told me about it. And it was extremely emotional. To a neurologist, particularly one who is a specialist in stroke, there aren't too many things that cause sudden loss of, of ability to move without making the person totally unconscious. I, I would guess that definitely there was not a neurologist. It might not have been identified as even being a stroke. And um, if it was, people might not have identified how urgent it was. Fortunately, we got to her room uh, within an hour of the symptom onset. She was treated within 70 minutes of symptom onset. I might add that only 1% of stroke patients are treated within that first hour or so after symptom onset right now in the United States. So the mobile stroke unit, as I mentioned before, moves everything faster. We were able to treat her in about 70 minutes and um, she eventually completely recovered. Aside from what we do on, and what we built, what occurred on the mobile stroke unit changed the outcome of her life for the next however many years. So. Uh, hearing her story and hearing what a potentially profound impact this vehicle can have on the community, uh, it, it was just really neat. It was something that kind of makes the hair on your arms stand up. So 
Anytime someone's going to look at a stroke program, they want to know what's my ROI, what is my return on investment. It costs the healthcare system about $200,000 every time someone has a stroke. The majority of that, what they're telling me about two-thirds of it, is actually on the rehabilitation side. If we can reduce the time and reduce the damage, the sooner that intervention occurs, the potentially better outcome and long-term benefits and taking a burden off of the healthcare system if, if two-thirds of that cost is on the rehabilitation side. And this is the first uh, such uh, uh, project in the country. So uh, I believe that 10 years from now, people all over the country and cities all over the country are going to do what we're doing here in Houston. This is something that, that has the ability to really change the way things are done. Um, I know there is equipment that's carried on emergency vehicles that 10 years ago, 15 years ago, people wouldn't have dreamt of putting on these. So uh, if it's something that has a material impact on the outcome for the patient, on the outcome for the community as a whole and on the healthcare system, then yes, I think people will, will want those and I think hospitals and cities and insurance companies will, will recognize that and move forward with them. So if this is something a department or a hospital system is thinking about doing, call us. We are, along with the Mobile Stroke Consortium, quickly becoming subject matter experts in this. We can talk to you about what needs to be set up from Medicare and Medicaid, how to designate potentially an ambulance or a mobile clinic. There are a lot of issues surrounding setting up a program, so we're, we're working with Dr. Grata and gaining quickly that expertise and how all of that goes. So we can get you that information and help you get a program up and running in, in rather short order. We've got the expertise, we've got the excitement, we've got the platform, and if we can do a CT scan in the back of a unit like this, who knows what we're going to do next.